Hi everybody, it's Adrian Plass here again. Yes, and it's Bridget here again. <laughs> nice to be with you. We've, uh, we're have having some fun emails at the moment, I'll tell you, about church notices. I'm not quite sure if we do believe them, but we have been told they are true. We have indeed. You've got one there, haven't <laughs> I you? I have. And this is a notice um, from, the, from the front of church on Easter Sunday morning. As today is Easter Sunday, at an appropriate moment, Mrs White will come forward and lay an egg on the altar. I'd love to have seen that. Um, and this one, the person who sent this, promises me it's true. Um, this was an open-air meeting when he was a teenager, and it's one of the elders listing activities. And uh, he mentions a session for young mothers, and this is what he said. So, ladies, if you've got nothing on, I'd love to see you in the room at the back of the church on Tuesday afternoon. <laughs> I have no comment whatsoever on that. No, no, it's quite a challenge to tell the truth without embroidering it just a it little bit, isn't it? Can be, yes, mm. yes. It and it's also, you know, there's always that possibility that something can be true, but not maybe the whole truth. The grandson of some friends of ours is a very good example of this. He was a reluctant piano player. He uh, practiced reluctantly, he went to his lessons reluctantly, and he took his exam reluctantly. And uh, so both his grandparents were pretty surprised when he arrived one afternoon and he said, I've passed, I've passed the exam, and I was the only one who passed. Mm -hmm. Really? said his granddad. Yes, said his grandson, I was the only one who passed. The others all got a distinction, but I was the only <laughs> one who passed, which to us is probably the best example ever of something that is the truth, yeah. but maybe not quite the whole I truth. I think that's quite sweet, oh, really. so do I. I was actually very lucky um, in my so-called speaking career. Uh, in the early days, I went on a little tour, and the person leading the tour was an evangelist, now there are some there are some great evangelists around. Um, some of you will be aware that evangelist is an anagram of signage bent, and after knowing that, you have to believe in God, really, don't you? There you are were some, actually converted through a wonderful evangelist. No, there are, there are some so. great evangelists, and I, I'm very grateful to the person who who made it possible for me to start thinking serious. But um, this taught me a lesson in a completely different way, um, because this. This event. The problem with evangelists who are not wonderful is that they <clears throat> they say the same thing about thirty nine million times, and um, after about the first two, you think you've probably got the point. <laughs> so I go on and I read a poem or something. I was quite nervous in those days, and then he came on and he said something very like this: "Friends, I don't worry because I belong to God." I belong to God, friends, so I don't have to worry. Why worry when you belong to God? I don't. Would you like to know why I don't? Well, it's because I belong to God, and belonging to God is the beginning of not worrying. So, after he'd ranted on like this for about half an hour, he came into the wings where I was, and he said, I'm really worried. He said, I don't think I got through to them at all. And I said, you just told these 300 <laughs> people or whatever it is that you never worry because you belong to God and you belong to God, so you don't worry. You said it You said it hundreds of times. And he said, oh, well, I was preaching then. And I decided on that day that if it was possible, I would tell the truth uh -huh. about myself and about God. Uh, and I'm sure I failed in that at times, but... That was really helpful for me. I don't want to be in that situation. No, because it can trap you, can't it? I mean, it's supposed to set you free. The truth will set the us free. The truth is supposed to set but us actually, free. But actually, it could be one of the massive pressures on us. Well, to... if you discover you're not free, you can be pretty sure that you're not dealing with the truth. Yes. I mean, let's take something that is very common in the church as guidance. Now, since I became a Christian years and years and years ago, Guidance was a kind of part of the whole package. Mm. You were guided by God. You were giddied. You got gidden. Um, and there was a sort of understanding we all did. Um, actually, 
there's not as much guidance, specific guidance around as people. Well, you're talking say specific there is. guidance, yeah, aren't specific you? Specific yeah. guidance, and yeah. um, uh, also we are impoverished in terms of language with this kind of thing. So we only really have two metaphors for this. Yes. So here's somebody who was seeking guidance um, from God. Now, Mr. Williams, it's wonderful to have you here at our meeting. And I know that you would love to talk to us a little bit about guidance because you and your wife, you have recent experience of seeking guidance, haven't you? Yes, yes, we did. We did have an experience. Yes. Yeah. Well, I wonder if you'd like to share it with everybody here. Yes, I would. I'm a bit nervous. Yeah. Um, well, what happened was yes. um, we tried one door mm -hmm. that we thought the Lord was opening for us. Mm -hmm. But when, as it were, we pushed it, mm -hmm. we found that it was shut. So we tried another door, mm -hmm. and this time it did open. So we passed through, and on the other side, there was another door. Oh. <clears throat> but this one was shut like the first door. And when we turned around and tried to go back through the previous door, that mm -hmm. is the second door, mm -hmm. uh, we discovered that it had shut behind us. So we were, in fact, as it were, trapped between the two doors. Oh. So we had to climb out, as it were, through the skylight, and we came down through another skylight mm -hmm. and found ourselves in front of... Uh, a fourth door right. and this door was slightly ajar so I pushed it but it was on a very strong spring and it swung back and hit me quite hard in the face oh my so I did rebuke that door yeah. and all other doors actually at that stage mm. and we did wonder whether doorways might create openings through which something demonic could come so oh. we decided then to seek the Lord's will by laying a fleece oh well, now that's wonderful but no Mr. no Williams. no that's no wonderful. no that's... no the Lord shut that door oh um <clears throat> Mr. Williams, um, I wonder if you'd like to tell everybody what it was that you and your wife were seeking guidance about? Oh, yeah. No, yeah. Um, well, no, it was whether to um, buy an open plan house or not. Oh. Mm -hmm. Two metaphors, two ways of thinking, and both of them, obviously, sometimes it's right. Mm. Obviously, sometimes God will open a door. Obviously, mm. sometimes when one lays down a fleece, he will respond to it. But sometimes when it, you lay down a door, no, 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 no. Um, it's a very interesting area. It really is. And he, here's a really annoying, another annoying metaphor for everybody. Um, it's to do with sat navs. Okay. Mm. Now our lives were changed by sat navs, weren't they? Mm -hmm. I mean. You well, know, things, by ours, yes. Yeah, was. things yeah. things got better, didn't they? Well, they did because it stopped us getting lost outside every city <clears throat> that we were arriving in to do a talk and getting very cross with each other. And uh, that's correct. And no, it really, really made a, hu a huge difference. One of the problems, though, was that every now and then, because the sat nav wasn't the Wi-Fi wasn't mm. connected to anything like that, mm. you would arrive at the edge of the edge of a canal <laughs> yes. or a cliff edge, perhaps not quite that, but something like that. And the voice would say, um, "Move, move ahead." So it goes straight ahead, and there was always something in me that thought, "Yes, we should, we <laughs> should." Is telling us we should. Um, well, now we've got a phone which is Wi-Fi attached, right? Mm. So when we uh, when we use our um, Wi-Fi, uh, our sat-nav thing in the car, mm. it's it's good up to a point. And then we put the Wi-Fi on and it says blockage ahead or it gives us an alternative route or it makes sure we don't screw up in some way because of new roads or something. Now, my um, not terribly simple point is that I think we Christians probably need Wi-Fi attachments. We need an upgrade in terms of guidance mm. because it isn't enough to know that you always ought to be nice to people. That's that's very easy. But there are times, and you can read about it in the Bible, when people change direction because of specific guidance. Mm -hmm. um, uh, not exactly a blockage in the road, but uh, somewhat similar. Um, and there's a, there's a, I found a little thing in, in um, Proverbs the other day, or we did, which I, I thought was good. It said, um, with all your heart, you must trust the Lord and not your own judgment. Always let him lead you and he will clear the road for you to follow. And I think what I'm saying is that, yes, go by what you know. Go by what you know to be true. You can read things in the Bible and you've learned things. But there are times when you need to keep your mind open and your mm. attention 
to know what happens next. Mm. I mean, a lot of the time, to be honest, I do think we uh, forget that we were given common sense. And it's called common because everybody gets a bit. But a lot of the time, we know what we should be doing and we do the next thing, don't we? We do. Um, I I was trying to think of an example of what I'm talking about. Paul Paul the Apostle. You've heard of Paul the Apostle, haven't you? Thank you, darling. Yes, I have. (laughs) You wrote a book about him, didn't you? Mm -hmm. Um, Paul was going to go to Bithynia Mm. and it was a reasonable, good decision. Yeah. He prayed about it. And he set off and he was stopped from going because it was the wrong thing to do mm. and i think m- my prayer nowadays is more stop me yeah really is stop me if i get it wrong um and i i'm hoping i'll be shown a, an easier way if i need to, need yeah. to find it yeah yeah i mean we were talking weren't we about the difference between what would Jesus do and what is Jesus doing and I suppose that is the Wi-Fi sat nav for the Holy Spirit really yeah. what today mm. is the thing yeah. never mind what it was before or what we think it should be yeah. um, and I was thinking about the fact that we are in a very unusual time as we keep saying and one of the unusual things about it is that a lot of things that have been hidden before that haven't been part of our thinking when it comes to the pot of guidance Mm -hmm. are suddenly in front of us. And I was thinking about when Jesus came from the desert and came to the synagogue, if you remember, in Isaiah, and he came into Nazareth. And what we're told is that he stood up to read from the scriptures and he was given the book of Isaiah the prophet and he opened it and read, the Lord's spirit has come to me because he's chosen me to tell good news to the poor, to announce freedom for prisoners, to give sight to the blind, to free everyone who suffers and to say, this is the year the Lord has chosen. Well, these people were all hidden you know the poor weren't noticed prisoners were well terrible things will have happened to them and nobody would have cared at all we discover some of the awful things that happen to prisoners when we read acts to give sight to the blind the blind there must have been something you did wrong in your own life or your parents did for you to be struck blind to free everyone who suffers Mm. and i was thinking that at the moment the interesting thing is that every day people are coming out of the shadows old people in care homes, people with dementia, people with learning difficulties, looked after children, people that haven't really been on our radar Mm -hmm. suddenly are. And I thought, you know, we probably don't really need very specific guidance in, I mean, when I say specific, I mean, we don't need grandiose guidance at the moment. We need specific guidance. We need to think, is there someone who has been forgotten, who's Mm. fallen off our radar, who we haven't been guided to because they weren't very straightforward or big or grand, that we now need to be looking at. We need that that Wi-Fi. It is is really an intelligent, intelligent view of what is happening, but with your mind open to receive anything that is different. Yeah. Because you never know. And it's one of the most exciting things for me about that um i think about about the possibility of what god is going to do i wonder if we could finish by reading um um, a bit by would you read that bit by c.s lewis this is from a a letter and it's and typical in terms of metaphor it's muscular Mm. uh, Mm. metaphor by lewis but Mm. have a listen to this Mm. he has his own way with each of us so don't worry continue all your efforts You're being steered by another, you only got to row, and therefore the future journey is behind your back. I'm pretty sure where you'll land myself, and you will then wonder how you ever doubted it. But you needn't keep looking over your shoulder too often. Keep your eye on the helmsman, keep your conscience bright, your brain clear, and believe that you are in good hands. And I like the bit that follows, actually. No one can make himself believe anything, and the effort does harm. Nor make himself feel anything, and that effort also does harm. What is under our own control is action and intellectual inquiry. 
stick to that all good wishes mm. and right in the center of that um, thought by Lewis is I love the fact that you're rowing backwards well we're the, in the boat aren't we we're in the boat and therefore you can't see your destination mm. you can only see the person who is steering yeah. um, I think we have a bit of a way to go before we achieve that totally yes. but it's it's very good advice so lovely to be with you again bye-bye bye-bye